Hello, hello, my name is Callista, and welcome back to Dragon Age Inquisition. In the last episode, we were back in Skyhold. We no longer have to deal with giants, and that is, that is such a relief. Now, we were very quickly doing just kind of one last, you know, round of, uh, I was going to say party camp talks, but when we're not at our party camp. This isn't Dragon Age Origins. And um, we were just having a run around, having a quick little chat with all of our companions. We only have Sarah and Cole left to speak to. And after that, I intend on doing Dorian's personal quest. Now, I didn't actually realize how many companion quests I actually had up. We have to go to the Storm Coast with Bull. We have to meet Josephine in Val Royo. I do kind of want to get all of that done before starting um, the next main quest. So we won't get to that as quickly as I first thought we would be. However, it it's just a couple of personal quests. Just a couple of personal quests. It won't take me all that long, I promise. I swear down. Now then, Sarah. Also, anything? Inquisitor. No, nothing. Okay. You two do you. Sarah, are you still pissed at me for uh, preventing you from committing murder? Something on? Mm. Yeah, and anything else you want to tell me? Tell me about yourself. What about me? Yeah, n n no, no, when... We'll talk later. If you say so. Okay, bye. <laughs> Oh, it's, it's a blessing and a curse. On one hand, we aren't progressing Sarah's, you know, friendship. We're not progressing that relationship. But on the other hand, that means I don't have to talk to Sarah as much, which... Hmm. She spins, plucking strings, matching wits and words. An admiral who will never send ships of her own. Josephine. He's talking about Josephine there. Can you explain how your mind works? Yes. <laughs> nice, great. Hmm. Explain the helping process. You think about our friends. What do you see in me? It seems a sad way to be. Um, that depends on your definition of sadness, though. Like, yeah, Cole is hearing all of these pained voices, but it means he knows where they are. It means he gets to help them, which is happy, you could argue. It must be sad feeling everyone's pain all the time. Why? Isn't it? No. I help. I find wounds and heal them. I salve, soothe, save. I see pain and make it better. How could I not be happy? Exactly. Can you explain the helping process? Walk me through the way you help someone. I start by listening. I hear hurt, feel it fretting. Some you can solve by giving something. Food, a blanket, sleep. Some are intangible, terrible tangles that catch on a crack. Fix it, festering, and the person makes a pearl of pain. I shake it loose. No pearl, no pain. They can hope, they can heal. Mm. <laughs> As we talk about our friends, we get this song. Great. Yeah, you, you think about our friends? Sometimes you say things that relate to other members of the Inquisition. They remember me. Their eyes stick, some more. They want me to be. Varric is quiet inside. He pulls me more to hear. Makes me a person. Calls me kid. A friend. Solus, bright and sad. Observes and accepts. Spirit self, seeing the soul, Solus. But somehow, sorrows. And what do you see in me? What do you sense when you focus on me? You're too bright. Like counting birds against the sun. The mark makes you more, but past it, pulled. Blood that is not blood, a tiny trace of time. Lips struggling to shape language your parents lived. And past that, the weight of all on you. All the hopes you carry, fears you fight, you are theirs. It must be very hard. I hope I help. Oh, I love that. I love that. That that second line is determinant on your race. 
So because, you know, we're an elf, the elves don't speak elvish. So lips struggling to, you know, form the language your parents spoke. Oh, I, I love it. I love it. Oh, I, I, you, you always help, Cole. You always help. I'll talk to you later. Probably. I love him so much. She hurts, but helping hurts more. She sees the strings that pull me, eyes like raisins in a stale cookie. Sarah. I'll talk to you later. How do you know? Okay, and with, who, who was that? Who be that? I I presume that would be Sarah. It was, it's kind of in that direction. Yeah, yeah, that was Sarah dinging for me. Um, yeah, we've spoken to everyone now. Oh, I'm... I'm excited to get to Dorian's personal quest. I am very excited for that because I am... I am quite fond of that quest. It was... Uh, yes, the Hinterlands. Oh, no, 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 cancel. Oh, what is this? One last Venatori. Aha! That's unfinished business. One last Venatori. Okay. And then we have that. And there is... There are a few locked doors. And... I want to bring Cole and Vivienne to one of these. So, you know what? Let's... Yep, travel over to here. And we will bring Cassandra... Let's go Cassandra, Varric, Dorian. There we go. And then once we've completed Dorian's personal quest, and, you know, we've we've gotten the Venatori, we've gotten the, uh, whoever Cassandra is hunting, we can swap out Varric and Dorian for Cole and Vivienne. That seems good. Okay. Now then, you... This, this won't hey, take two time. minutes. It won't take two minutes to uh, deal with these guys, I'm sure. I, I think I know where these guys are, because there was this kind of... Um, kind of creepy area. Sort of back this way. Lots of mist generally seemed rather unsettling. If I were Venatori, I'd hang out there. I mean, just just to double down on the, uh, the emo vibes, because why not? You might as well. Yep, yeah, it was down here. Hello! Start up and spinny spin. Woo! Go back. Oh, this is not a good angle. There we go. There we go. Oh shit, there's, there's more of them. I didn't see them. Didn't see you there, mate. There we go. Oh, and he's dead. There we go. Dorian greatly approves. Excellent. See, I told you that wouldn't take me two minutes. I told you. Oh, this is bear country, isn't it? Well, I guess we're going back down to bear country. Now, you might say, oh, but the bears are much lower level than you, Callista. No. No, because I've got even footing on. So they're the same level as me. God damn it. I hate bears in this game. I loathe them. They kick my ass and I don't approve of that. I don't enjoy that happening. But I wanted a challenge. That is why I put uh, even footing on because the, the, the game can get incredibly easy if you don't have it on, in, in my opinion at least. One of the Templar targets. Okay, guard up and spinny spin. Again, this is a bad angle. Scream, come on. Just 
Get him! Get someone, I don't know who! Run him over! Way! Run him out! And a spinny spin again! Not up! Come on! Take him out, you next! down as is you there we go sad that it came to this but at least it is done indeed indeed it is done and dusted and they can't hurt anyone else anymore now I I kind of want to just have a wee oh Whilst I was, whilst I was editing the episode when I was first here, I noticed I left a chest behind. I can finally reclaim it. Oh, excuse you. Excuse you. How dare you bear much offence. Oh my god, it's, it's so tough. It's so tough. This bear is a hoe. Just keep hitting it. Hopefully we can guard up at some point. There we go. Get you some guard, girl. And a spinny spin. Grab it. Keep on it. Keep bapping it. Uh, guys, if, if y'all could help, that'd be great. Now, I will say these, these bears aren't nearly as tough as the grey ones, but... Still pretty chunky. D Dorian, are you even hitting the bear? What are you... What are you firing at? No, seriously, what are you firing at? Why are you attacking the ram? Guys, everyone on the bear, please. Why are you facing that way? Cassandra, don't... Don't attack the ram. The ram has done nothing. Get it? And a spinny spin, can we? There we go. Guard up. There we go. Running speed. Come on, guys, if, if y'all would like to help. They, they have to wait until it's no longer afraid. I guess they feel guilty. There we go. Everyone disengage now. Would, there we go. Again, guys, the the ram is not a threat. I'm telling you, it, it is all good. You don't need to be concerned about it. It's just a ram. Then it turns out that ram was being possessed by a demon, and we just never knew when we left it out in the wild. The demon ram. One last group of Venatory and we can... No. I see you on my minimap. I'm not dealing with you. I'm not dealing with you. I just want to find some mages. That's all I want to do. Just some mages that we have to muck. There we go. Hello. Hello. You all have to die. And a spinny spin. Spinny spin. There we go. Woo, Nelly. Got up. And I'm back. Who am I fighting? Where am I going? Ooh. Tip sip. Come on. Shoot him. Come 
Okay. There we go. Whoa, Nelly. I know. There you go. Get your ass off, girl. It's fine. It's Reet. Take a second. And there we go. Dorian's... Dorian's lesser personal quest. Done and dusted. Excellent. Now then, let's head over to Redcliffe Village proper. We have that meeting. If you can't remember what this is about, basically Dorian's father asked Mother let's Giselle... Indeed, let's, let's grab this while we're here. Um, yeah, Dorian's father sent a letter to Mother Giselle... Here's the thing, he keeps talking about it because it's a threat. He's concerned for his safety and burying your head in the sand and, and, and you're just saying, oh no, my son's not a mage, he's not a mage, he's having dreams and he's casting fireballs, but no, he's totally not a mage. That isn't helping. Did you learn nothing, madam? Did you learn nothing from his old? God damn. Now, as I was saying, um... There's so much banter in here. The mages and Templars are no longer fighting. They have to travel now. We should leave. I'm going to pause so I can say my thought. Um, Dorian's father gave Giselle a note, or he sent her a letter basically saying, Hey, I'm concerned for my son's safety. Could you send him to this secret meeting in um, the Redcliffe Tavern? Uh, we're going to send... A, um, I'm, I'm coming up with ambassador, retainer, there we go. We're going to send a family retainer to bring him onwards to a meeting with me. Um, if you tell him, then he won't come. So please, could you keep it a secret? And Giselle, obviously, Dorian hates her because she's very judgmental towards him. So she asked Ionor to do it. Ionor refused to keep it a secret. She told Dorian outright. And so Dorian has asked... Iron ore to go with him to meet this retainer, just in case it's a trap. And you are now mine. Grey Whiskey Right Wine Conscription Ale. A bottle marked Vintage Wooden Steed Joining Juice. What a name, that's beautiful. And thank you for the money. It is always appreciated. Okay, and I'm leaving. Don't talk about it, mother. If I'm a mage, I have to learn how to defend myself against demons attacking me in my dreams. Look around, you stupid boy. The demons are already attacking us out here. Good day. God damn it, this lady. It's good he's sticking up for himself, but... Yes, sir. Oh, the demons are attacking us out here. Yeah, and if they attack him inside his own head, he's fucked. Um, I was going to say, I'm leaving the locked door down that way for a, you know, like, like I said, until I have Vivienne and Cole. Uh, Varric, again, if you would be so kind. Anything in here? A yoink, don't mind if I do. And Lyrium. Lyrium is the king of metals. Beneath our feet it sings. When properly refined, it is a smooth, slightly iridescent, silvery liquid. In the hands of the dwarven smith cast, it is mixed with steel to produce indestructible armour and blades that hold an edge for centuries. In the hands of the shaperet, it becomes a repository for living memories. Some scholars maintain this as evidence that Lyrium is itself alive. It finds its most lucrative... I, I don't know if I read that correctly. I'm going to reread it. It finds its most lucrative... It, uh, no, there's a... There's a typo. There's a typo. That's what's throwing me off. It finds its most lucrative application in the hands of the Formari, who use it in conjunction with baser metals like gold, silverite, viridium, or even iron to produce enchantments. 
Although mages, of course, consume it in a diluted form to bolster their abilities, this is not recommended. Overindulgence in lyrium can have disastrous consequences, particularly in more concentrated amounts. It is not advisable, for instance, that any reader handle raw lyrium, which in many cases can kill on contact. An excerpt from An Alchemical Primer of Metallurgy, Volume 1, by Lord Serastus of Marnus Pell. Very interesting. There we go. And there weren't... Yet yeah, no other locked doors are showing up on our map. It's just the one by the docks. Long day. Now then, let's go meet with that family retainer. Good day. I will love you no matter what, you know that. But it's not safe to be a maid right now. I know, Mother. I... I love you too. You'll be joining <laughs> up soon, Your Worship. Thank you for all you've done. I get where that woman is coming from. I get where she's coming from, but you can't pick and choose when to be a mage and when not to be a mage. If he's a mage, he's a mage. End of. He can't just choose not to be. Uh-oh, nobody's here. This doesn't bode well. Dorian. Father. So the whole story about the family retainer was just, what? A smokescreen? Then you were told. I apologize for the deception, Inquisitor. I never intended for you to be involved. Of course not. Magister Parvis couldn't come to Skyhold and be seen with the dread Inquisitor. What would people think? What is this exactly, Father? Ambush? Kidnapping? A warm family reunion? <sighs> this is how it has always been. Just talk to him. Maybe I should go. He has a right to be angry. Ooh. Ooh, this is difficult. This is difficult. Here's the thing, we don't know why Dorian is angry. He might have a right to be angry, or he might not. We genuinely don't know at this point. And if he does have a right to be angry, then saying, oh, just talk to him. Just talk to him. I... <sighs> if his father did something then Dorian has every right to be angry and it's it's not up to Dorian to fix that relationship if his father fucked up. Um, maybe I should go. Dorian is Einar's friend. She wouldn't just know pow. That being said, this... Yeah, this doesn't seem to be addressing Dorian. This is addressing his father. I mean, we don't know this guy. Why would we be hostile right off the bat? We, we might be hostile because Dorian is our friend and he's angry. Therefore, he must have a reason to be angry. Um, but Einar, Einar doesn't jump to anger as a first response. So I, I guess I'm going to go with this one. You went through all of this to get Dorian here. Talk to him. Yes, father. Talk to me. Let me hear how mystified you are by my anger. Dorian, there's no need to. I prefer the company of men. My father disapproves. And there we have the, the outright confirmation. I like that. There are so many characters in, you know, video games, films, books, where they're, they're clearly written to be gay, but... They never say. They never say. Like, I, I remember um, in... Th there was a, a Cruella reboot. It was... It was I. I liked the, uh, I liked the clothes in it. Um, it, was, it was very good costuming. Um, and there was a character called... I believe he was called Artie, something like that. 
And again, the, the writers came out and said, we, we wrote Artie as a gay character, but we couldn't say because it's Disney and they will never outright say, oh yeah, this character is gay. So we, we wrote him as that, but we couldn't put any kind of confirmation in. So I, I like that they go out of their way to confirm that like, oh no, Dorian is gay. Like he outright says it. And I, there's a, um, the company of men. Again, I know understands what he means. I know wouldn't ask this, but if you do, if you're playing like, like I said before with the, um, you know, the, the creme comment in the, the conversation with Iron Bull, there are characters I have that are slightly more naive who maybe wouldn't understand what Dorian means. Um, and Dorian outright, outright says, did I stutter? I prefer the company of men, as in sex. And I'm just like, oh, I love it. I love it so much. Um, yeah, I, I know understands what he means. She she doesn't need to question that. Um, yeah, and is, is that an issue, Intervinter? That's a big concern, Intervinter, then. Only if you're trying to live up to an impossible standard. Every Tavinter family is intermarrying to distill the perfect mage, perfect body, perfect mind, the perfect leader. It means every perceived flaw, every aberration is deviant and shameful. It must be hidden. Mmm. Mmm. I think Ainor is a... Uh very quickly picking up on the fact that like okay they tried to hide dorian away to some extent give your father a chance that's what this is about so walk away um here's here's the thing if his father hurt him it's not up to dorian to repeat to, to repeat that to um to heal that i i know i'm repeating myself there but it's it's true, it's not Dorian's responsibility to fix his father's fuck-up fuck or ensure that he has a relationship with his dad. His dad should apologise. Um, like, I'm pretty sure I said this before, Ainul loves her family. And I think she is a little distressed when she sees families that are being torn apart. However, she's not blindly loyal. If her dad really fucked her over... If he really hurt her, then no, she's not going to give him a second chance because you really hurt me. You really did some serious damage and it's not up to me to keep the peace. If you want a relationship, then you work to regain my trust. You apologize sincerely and you make sure that doesn't happen again. Like, and if he didn't want to do that, if he said, oh no, that's too much faff, then I was like, well, I guess we don't have a relationship then because I'm not going to be a doormat. So it... I think she'd be pained by saying, oh, well, just give up then. Just give up on your family. But I don't think she'd be putting the, the responsibility on Dorian to give his father a second chance. I, I, I think maybe in that case, she's just a bit shocked at like, oh, really, that's what this is coming down to? Because I, I don't think her father has ever had any issue with Ionor's sexuality. I've said this in the past. I imagine she's had both, you know, boyfriends and girlfriends and maybe some non-binary partners in the past. And I don't think her father has had any kind of problem with that. So I think, I think in this case, she'd just be a little bit like, oh, really? Like, that's, that's what happened? He's pissed off about your sexuality? Really? So that's what all of this is about. Who you sleep with. That's not all it's about. Dorian, please. If you'll only listen to me. Why? So you can spout more convenient lies? He taught me to hate blood magic. The resort of the weak mind. Those are his words. But what was the first thing you did when your precious heir refused to play pretend for the rest of his life? You tried to change me. I only wanted what was best for you. You wanted the best for you. Your fucking legacy. Anything for that.
don't leave it like this. Let's get you out of here. Are we done? You didn't let him speak. So I, I have a couple of things to say here. Um, I think they're both right, or at least they both believe what they're saying. When his father says, I wanted what was best for you, and Doreen says, no, you wanted what was best for you for your fucking legacy. I think they're both right. I think a lot of parents, when their child comes out, I think a lot of them can feel concerned because the world, we have made so many strides forward in LGBTQA plus um, representation and acceptance, but there is still a lot of hatred out there and there is a lot of bullshit propaganda. Like, the, like y you see it now, you're like, oh, gay men are pedophiles. And it's like, no, they're fucking not. Where are you getting this bullshit from? No, the, you, you're talking bollocks. You're talking out your ass. There's a difference between liking men and liking children. Like, they are not the same thing. Like, there is so much hatred out there. And there are so many gay people and trans people and just so many lgbtqa plus people who are harassed and there goes my timer who are harassed on a day-to-day -day business day-to-day -day business day-to-day -day basis it's, it, it's the heat it's the heat getting to me and you know getting physically attacked in the street for their sexual orientation or how they present themselves and I think a lot of parents can be so concerned that that is what is going to happen to their kids. So they have this negative response saying, oh, no, no, hide it. Stay in the closet. Like, don't come out to anyone else. Like, hide this. And I don't think they realize that by doing that, they are saying you should be ashamed. You should be ashamed of your sexuality. I'm like, from the parent's perspective... You know, putting a child through conversion therapy, which is barbaric and should be uh, abolished completely and utterly. It should be made illegal. How it isn't, I do not know. But I do think there are some parents who put their kids through conversion therapy because they want to help them. It's coming from a good place. They don't understand the harm they are doing. They don't understand the damage that they are doing to protect their child from damage. And I think Dorian is correct in that there probably was a bit of like, oh shit, he's gay. He's never going to have kids. What will happen to House Parvis? What will happen to my family name? I need to change that. I need to make this correct. Now, I think no matter what you do here, I kind of feel like it's the right choice. If you have Dorian speak to his father to try and get some sort of closure I think it's right and I think if you decide no we're like this guy tried to change Dorian using blood magic he basically tried to put him through conversion therapy and it could have gone horribly horribly wrong um I need to protect him from that I'm just gonna get him out I think that is a perfectly justified response I'm gonna have Ainor say don't leave it like this um, not this. You didn't let him speak. Uh, he, he tried to use blood magic to tra to change Dorian. Like, no, we shouldn't be pissed at Dorian for being justifiably angry. However, this, I think, is within Ionor's character. It's, how do I put, how do I put it? His father did look ashamed. She saw that. He looked ashamed. He seemed to look sorry. And if it turns out that, you know, like, oh, don't leave it like this. And his father goes, I regret nothing. Then at that point, we hurry Dorian out of the bar. Like, you know, that that's bullshit. But his father seemed contrite, or at least his facial expressions said that, you know, he, he felt bad. Um... He clearly has something to say. And there, there is an out-of-character reason for why I'm I'm picking this. Um, I've, I've mentioned this before. Uh, I am bisexual. Um, the person I came out to first 
was my singing teacher. Um, I was a little worried about coming out to my parents. It, it was a stupid thought, an incredibly stupid thought, because my, my parents had been gearing up for me to come out as a lesbian for years prior. Um, and they, they had never shown any signs of homophobia or biphobia or anything like that but I was I was a little scared to come out to them first and so I decided to come out to my um my singing teacher she was a woman in her in her 40s and she always used to say oh I'm I'm completely open-minded in here you can be whoever you want to be I you know like I I love LGBTQA plus people to be fair LGBTQA plus wasn't exactly um a thing yet so I I love LGBT people you know you be you. Everyone is welcome here. What she actually meant was, I love gay men. And all the other letters disgust the shit out of me. That's what she actually meant. And you could tell that I was very stupid. I, I, I think I was so dumb because I ignored so many red flags. I ignored so many red flags because she would I I I um I feel like I should give a, a trigger warning right here if you are very sensitive towards topics of um homophobia, biphobia, transphobia. Um a pop-up will be uh, you know, on screen right here. Skip ahead to that time and I'll be clicking this. Um basically she was she said the most disgusting things about lesbians and trans people. And I ignored them. Every time I ignored them, because my, my thought was always, oh, but she didn't know those people. Like she'd, how, how to describe it? If you've ever been to a gay bar, you'll see a group of young 20 something lads, they're probably in university, they're all hanging out. And there will be that one woman who's older, 40s, 50s, thereabouts, and she's laughing very loud, being quite obnoxious, buying them all drinks and being like, oh, I do love my gay boys. Ah! That was her. That was her. And I remember her telling me about an outing and one of um, the gay lads had invited a lesbian along. And I remember her talking to me about it afterwards, basically being like, she was looking me up and down all evening. It was disgusting. I felt so sexually harassed. How could she? And I remember thinking like she was a, like as I, I saw pictures of this girl and I'm like, she is a young, very attractive 20 something year old. Why would she be eyeing you up? There were other young, very attractive 20 something year olds in the bar. Why would she be eyeing you up? Or did you think she was eyeing you up because she was a lesbian and therefore she is somehow predatory towards other women? Mm. I didn't say that. I thought it, but again, I, I quietened those thoughts with, oh, well, she didn't know the girl. She didn't know her. If she had known her, then maybe it would have been different. And how she described trans people, again, just like oh trans men are just dykes who want to get straight girls into bed they're tricksy rapists and that kind of thing and oh trans women are just drag queens who do it full time just like, awful bullshit the most hateful bullshit and again i ignored it i ignored it like a dipshit because again i thought oh well she doesn't know these people she doesn't know them and I, I think the reason why I ignored it for so long was because I, I did kind of view her as like a, um, almost like a motherly figure. I was going through a lot of mental problems at the time. I, I very desperately wanted to die and my own mother didn't want to hear about it. And she did. She listened. And she was so kind to me in that regard that I couldn't, I couldn't reconcile with myself that she could be so kind and so hateful at the same time. And so I came out as bisexual to her and the first thing out of her mouth was, <laughs> um, no, no, you can't be bisexual because bisexuality doesn't actually exist. I, I have a psychology degree, so I know for a fact that um, bisexuality, it actually doesn't exist. So you, you can't be bisexual. 
And she was asking me the most stupid questions of like, are you attracted to men? Yeah, yeah, I am. And are you attracted to women? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, sexually attracted to women. Yeah, I understood your question. Yes, I am. And again, like, oh, bisexuality is an excuse used by sluts to justify them sleeping around. And you're not a slut, Callista, which means you can't be bisexual. Well, you've just contradicted yourself there, love. Is, is it a thing that doesn't exist or is it an excuse used by sluts? So therefore it does exist. Like, which is it? Which is it? And and again, she ended off her little rant with, one day you'll know who you're attracted to and you'll realise that bisexuality isn't a thing. You know, you'll realise if you're gay or straight. Mm -hmm. And afterwards I left and I was very upset. And like I said, I, I realised how many red flags I had ignored. I realised how stupid I had been. And I, I kind of, I said, I can't take, singing lessons with her anymore and I rang her up and I said I've got to cancel my singing lessons and do you know the first thing out of her mouth the first thing she said this isn't about that silliness the other day is it silliness that, that silliness and I lied I lied and said oh no it's because I, my exams are coming up and I really need to focus on them. But once my exams are done, I'll come back to having singing lessons. She was like, okay, sure, bye, Callista. And then I, I hung up and I, I never spoke to her again. And if I were given the chance, I, I would give anything to go back and say, um, yes, it is because of the other day, but not because of that silliness. It's because of your rampant biphobia. How dare you say that bisexuality doesn't exist? How dare you say the things you've said about lesbians and trans people? You are full of hatred. You are full of hatred. And the fact that you have a thing for gay men doesn't make you inclusive or progressive. Quite frankly, it's the complete opposite because you like gay men who are into fashion and music and being fabulous and gay men who are into weightlifting and football aren't really gay. They're just confused straight guys. Like, what the fuck is that? That's bullshit. And if you had a degree in psychology, then you should know that that is bullshit. But then again, your degree in psychology is over 20 years old and you clearly aren't keeping up with the latest studies, are you? I, I'd give anything to go back and speak my mind and tell her how stupid I had been for believing, for believing her when she claimed to be progressive and then listening to all of the hatred she spewed and thinking, oh, no, she clearly doesn't mean that. She says all the time how much she likes gay men. Like, I, I was so stupid. I was so stupid and it hurts. It hurts like hell. And I regret not speaking my mind. And Dorian deserves the chance to speak his mind. He deserves to get the last word in. So yeah, it's, it's kind of an in-character and out-of-character reason for why I prefer this. Don't leave it like this, Dorian. You'll never forgive yourself. Tell me why you came. If I knew, I would drive you to the Inquisition. You didn't. I joined the Inquisition because it's the right thing to do. Once, I had a father who would have known that. Once, I had a son who trusted me, a trust I betrayed. I only wanted to talk to him, to hear his voice again, to ask him to forgive me. There you go. There you go. It all came out right in the end. I'm glad Dorian got his happy ending. He says we're alike. Too much pride. Once I would have been overjoyed to hear him say that. Now I'm not certain. I don't know if I can forgive him. Mm. 
It'll take time. It's always blood magic. What he did was wrong. Are you all right? What exactly did he do? Um, I, it's personal, but I do think that Ionel would be curious. He tried to change you. Out of desperation. I wouldn't put on a show, marry the girl, keep everything unsavory, private and locked away. Selfish, I suppose. Not to want to spend my entire life screaming on the inside. He was going to do a blood ritual. Alter my mind. Make me... acceptable. I found out. I left. Do you think it would have worked? Can blood magic actually do that? Maybe. It could also have left me a drooling vegetable. It crushed me to think he found that absurd risk preferable to scandal. Part of me has always hoped he didn't really want to go through with it. If he had, I can't even imagine the person I would be now. You wouldn't like that, Dorian. Mm. Yeah, I, I think this is... This is the most important thing. Our opinion doesn't really matter. Is, is he all right? Are you all right? No, not really. Thank you for bringing me out there. It wasn't what I expected, but it's something. Maker knows what you must think of me now, after that whole display. You're brave. It was entertaining. No, it fucking wasn't your trouble. No, no, I, I think she'd think him very brave. I think you're very brave. Brave? It's not easy to abandon tradition and walk your own path. At any rate, Time to drink myself into a stupor. It's been that sort of day. Join me sometime, if you've a mind. I don't know what you think you're doing. Hmm? I'm being clucked at by a hen, evidently. Don't play the fool with me, young man. If I wanted to play the fool, I could be rather more convincing, I assure you. Your glib tongue does you no credit. You'd be surprised at the credit my tongue gets me, Your Reverence. Damn! <laughs> Also, Giselle, uh, he's over there. Are you all right? Oh, in the next episode, I guess we're gonna deal with this mess. But until then, please remember to like if you enjoyed. Leave a comment below. And if you wanted to subscribe, it would be very much appreciated. I've been Callista. Thanks for watching and see you in the next episode.